Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at something called the Diffable Data Source. This is a newer data source that's come out in iOS 13. It's got some really cool properties. And this episode, we're gonna explore how to use it with a UI table view and a UI collection view. Okay, let's begin. So the first example I'm gonna show you is actually an example I took from the Apple WWDC presentation and kind of converted it into my own. Actually, I did that with all these examples. This one's called Wi-Fi settings. It's a simplified example, but what it shows is it simulates what goes on in your iPhone when you have various Wi-Fi settings, you're detecting networks, and this is actually a diffable data source, which is a UI table view, which is constantly updating itself, but in a very simple, elegant way. Let me show you how it works. So basically, first we have a Wi-Fi controller, just a simple class, which basically just contains a list of all the different Wi-Fi's, and then is randomly adding and removing them to an array. That's what's controlling that data. It's just a controller, it's in a loop here, it's updating every thousand seconds, and it's just continuously randomly adding and removing some Wi-Fi's from an array. That's all this controller does. Now the object that's getting displayed here is a struct called a network. It's just a simple structure. But one thing you need to do with a difficult data source is whatever you present in there has to be hashable. So hashable means that it needs a unique ID. You have to be able to calculate a hash for it. And this is just how we do that in Swift. So every object needs an ID and it needs to be hashable. Okay, now to the good stuff. Let's go take a look at the view controller actually presenting this. So here's a view controller, standard view controller. It's just got a simple table view at the very top. And we basically just lay that out over the entire view using the auto layout. And here's where all the magic happens, this configure data source. So here we're basically creating something called a UI table view data source, which is a generic, which takes a section and that network object we talked about along with our table view. Now, this is the weirdest constructor I've ever seen. I've ever, never actually seen one of these before in Swift, but it's really, really cool. If you dig into it, what it's actually doing is here's the constructor, UI table view, generic, section identifier type, item identifier types. So those are like the sections and the rows that are going to appear in our UI table view. But check this out. There's this type alias called a cell provider, which basically returns a table view cell. So this is a closure, which takes as an input a UI table view, an index path, an item identifier type, and returns a table view cell. Now, why is that so interesting? Well, that's used in this constructor right here. Int table view, and then you also pass in this closure, which returns a UI table view. That's what's going on with this line of code here, which I found so interesting. I've never seen this before. You basically return a table view cell as part of the constructor when you're using a UI table view diffable data source. So that's very different from what we're used to seeing in a UI table view, where you return the cell on the delegate. Here, it's built right into the constructor. So here, we just define the cell that we'd like to return. We populate it, and we can do that because it passes back to us the table view, the index path, and the item that it wants to appear in that cell. And that's basically it. Once we've created that data source, we can do really cool things with it. Like look what happens now when we call update UI, which updates our table view with new elements. First, we create something called a snapshot. So this takes a view of the data source as it currently looks and just goes, okay, snapshot it, here's what it looks like. Then we can take whatever we want the new data to look like. In this case, we're sorting it by name because behind the scenes, this list of Wi-Fi uh, elements has been updated. And then we simply go append sections, append items, and then apply. That's it. No more batch update, no more keeping track of indices and off by one errors. It's a totally simplified, really beautiful, elegant way of updating a table view dynamically based on some new data resources. Here's another really nice example. This one's called Mountain Search. We have a search bar at the top here, a table view of all the mountains in the world uh, with very high elevations. And basically, as you type here, it is dynamically updating the table view based on our keystrokes. Really, really cool. Look how quickly it does that, how smoothly it does that. 
and that again is using a diffable data source. The way this one works is basically we have, uh, first of all, just some raw data. This is all stored as a big string uh, in the file here. Then we have a mountain controller, which takes that string, also has a struct called mountain, which is hashable. That's what's gonna appear in our table view. So this is just the controller basically describing uh, what goes on in there. And all the real magic happens in this mountain table view controller. So again, this is very, very basic layout here. We've just got a search bar at the top, a table view. We lay them out using auto layout. And if we go and look at how we configured this data source here, it's the same thing as that same constructor. Here we pass in the section we'd like. The section in this case is just an enum, section enum main. We're just saying there's one section here called main. And then we pass in the object representing the item. In this case, it's gonna be that mountain object. And then again, we just define the cell. And here I've defined the simplest cell I could. This is just a regular table view cell. We just DQ it, we set the name, and that's all there is to it. Now, when we go up to the top here and type perform query and we type, it's gonna take the text from that search bar, filter the results of the mountains based on what we type, just looking for strings. And then again, just in these four simple lines here, it's gonna take a snapshot, it's gonna append the sections, it's gonna append the new items based on our filter and then apply. And voila, that's it. And here's one more example. It's the exact same thing, only here we're using a collection view. So this is doing the exact same uh, lookup. It's just uh, updating this time with a collection view and you can see some really nice animations in there. Really beautiful, really elegant, really nice control. So what are the advantages of the Diffable data source? Well, there's a few. For one, it's way less error prone. No more off by one errors. You don't have to worry about those index paths as much. The index paths are still there, but we don't have to use them like we do with the table view. This is a way more elegant, simple solution. You simply get the item you want in the cell as part of that constructor. These are thread safe, meaning you can do updates and use a diffable data source on a background thread. The only caveat is you need to be consistent, meaning if you do one update on a background thread, you should do them all update. You can't mix. As far as cons go, I really can't think of too many. This is only available in iOS 13, so we will have to wait until uh, all the phones catch up. But other than that, I think this is a really elegant, nice to use solution and it's well worth the effort. Okay, well that's a really quick introduction to the Diffable data source. Hope you found that useful. Uh, do check out the WWDC video. I'll leave a link to that down in the notes, along with another project you can download that comes with a part of that, which is really handy for exploring how this tool works. Of course, this source code is all available. So uh, do play around with it, uh, get in there, try it out for yourself, and hopefully it'll make your years a lot easier to work with. Okay, that's it for now. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.